uh, there was a document that was released by the German government, uh, in other words, an official document, and that document was called, let me just get my information here, it came from the Deutsche Bundestag, in other words, it's an official document, and it's Drucksache 17, that means uh, press release 17 slash 12051 and it was released in 2013 and based on research in this field around uh, possible epidemics and catastrophes mm. and how the state should respond to those. And I found this document so fascinating because it comes from 2012. Yes. So, you know, that's eight years ago. Mm. That's quite a long time ago. And the first part of the document deals with uh, flooding yeah. and what the governmental response should be should there be a large amount of flooding. And then the second half of the document uh, deals with risk analysis and protecting the population against the pandemic by a virus such as Modi SARS. And I have the document before me and I find it fascinating because it is like a blueprint of what we are seeing yes. in the world today. In fact, it mirrors it so exactly, it's like a script. <laughs> it's like a script. So the document gives a uh, analysis of how this thing will pan out. And it says, uh, what is the probability of this thing happening? And they say, highly probable. So this is going to happen. Yes. So it's, it's, a, it's a blueprint for how to react when it does happen. They have a a table right in the beginning where they look at the ramifications and the damage that will be caused by such an outbreak and uh, they later on in the document give you the numbers that are involved. Now Angela Merkel just recently had a, a public announcement where she had a very grave appearance and said that 70% of the people will probably be affected by this virus. If you go back to this, this graphic uh, representation of what the effect will be, it is divided into categories of what is the effect on the human being, what is the effect on the environment, what is the effect on the economy and what is the other, other effects and we'll talk about some of them. Now, deaths, they're talking here about categories from A to E and the maximum there in E is supposed to be around about seven and a half million deaths as a consequence. So the impact they say on humanity is going to be very high with uh, millions, seven and a half million probable deaths, uh, injured or people that are sick in the same number, in the same category, and uh, those that need help, again, maximum, so we're talking in the millions. And then a very interesting category, those that went missing. Yeah. And that is a, a relatively high number, so if we consider that the maximum here is seven and a half million, then the number of missing people here could be between a, th a third and half of that. Yes. So that's quite a number of people just gone missing, and they explain it by saying, well, maybe they were on a trip and didn't um, come back or whatever, they're just gone. So the damage lies with human, human beings. beings. Yes. And then the next one is a very interesting category with maximum damage, and that is the economy, the people's economy. Yes. In other words, the man on the street. Not necessarily the big companies, but 
the general economy. It Very seems strange. to have a major, major impact. And then also uh, impact on the public order will be very high. That means you can expect uh, disobedience, civil yes. disobedience, you can expect riots, you can expect all of these things. And the political ramifications will be massive. And the psychological ramifications will be massive. And then uh, cultural heritage sites, they won't be affected at all. So it seems as if the economy, especially the people's economy, humanity in general, and the political ramifications will be maximal. Politically, also with the disappearances, it gets interesting because some of the critics in China yes. have just disappeared. Nobody knows where they are. Yes. This pandemic will be worldwide. It'll be a worldwide pandemic because you cannot contain a virus, obviously. Yes. And what will be the probable vector? What will be the one that will cause the problem? So the scenario is that they have here is a hypothetical Modi SARS virus. And then they say, for example, SARS coronavirus COVID. Yeah. That's interesting. That is now eight years ago. So the probable virus could be the coronavirus, or then they throw in there the H5N1 influenza virus, or even some other, like HIV or something. But the, the first one they mention is SARS coronavirus COVID. COVID. And, uh, and this virus was first isolated around about 2012 in six patients. Now it's interesting that if you take that same number today, that's also where it would have started. Yes. But there was no pandemic at that stage regarding this virus. Now let's describe what happens. They're saying in this in this article, they're talking about the incubation time of the virus and how long it will take before you develop symptoms. That would be five days. Uh, and then 14 days before it manifests itself strongly and what it does, it attacks the respiratory system and you can become dizzy and you can get cramps and be, and the lethality, and now lethality is an interesting term, it's those that will die as a consequence okay. of the infection, in other words not of the whole population but of those that infected will be high. So what does that really mean? And then where will it appear? That's interesting. They say it will appear or be manifested particularly in Asia, North America and Europe. Yes. When will this happen uh, exactly? And they say this will occur in February in Asia. Now isn't it interesting that this uh, virus broke out in Asia yes. in February? Now this is eight years ago yes. that they're saying that it will probably come from Asia and then a couple of weeks later its dimensions will be realized and then in April it will be identified as Modi SARS yes. or coronavirus yes. and then it will come to Europe and the United States. So it comes out of South East Asia which is China and it'll come from the, the marketplace where the animals are and that's exactly what happened. Now, I find this rather fascinating that it is following this plan. And then only two people who had been in Asia will bring the disease to Europe and from there it will spread rapidly. So how long will this development continue? And uh, we, can, we can have new uh, cases appearing all the time 
but it seems as if the duration will probably be three years. So this document says three years. Yes. So when we get back to what the media is saying today, they said a few weeks, yeah. then they said three months, then I think Donald Trump said six months. That's it. And now the latest already is uh, an announcement in Germany that the, the restrictions as a consequence of the virus at this stage is estimated to be about two years. So we're getting very close to the three years. Yes. And then they have a graph here as to how it pans out. And you will see on the graph that on the one hand they have the number of people that get sick in percentage and at the bottom they have a three-year period in days. So there's 360 days, that's one year, and then they'll have two years and three years. So they are planning for a three-year period for this virus. So the next question is, what measures will be put in place to curtail the virus? Well, one of the first one, of course, is quarantine. Yes. And particularly self-quarantine. Now, it's interesting that as we go through this, you'll see this is exactly how it was handled. So yes. this is the blueprint. And as far as I can see, we are following the blueprint to a T yes. at the moment. It will be uh, isolation and home isolation. And then there will be other, there will be a reduction in your basic rights. Now here's a list that is fascinating. And the right to your privacy in your home will also be curtailed. In other words, even within your home sphere, the arm of the law will be noticeable. And the freedom, your basic human freedom, will be curtailed. Yes. Furthermore, by government decree, people can be compelled to be subjected to inoculation, for example, or other measures which they might prescribe. Okay, so they say that the ramifications in terms of your, your social life will be astronomical. Yes. Astronomical. In other words, let's put it bluntly, life will change completely. Now, not just for a week or a month, but we're talking years. So the tourist industry will be terribly affected. Yes. Now, where we live, in my part of the world, this part of the world survives 100% almost on the tourist industry. Yes. So if this really pans out the way that they are saying, then I think there will be serious repercussions in the area where we will live. So which areas will be particularly affected? The energy sector, for example, electricity, gas and, and mineral oils, etc., should not be affected. So that will continue. Telecommunication and information, that will continue. As far as air traffic is concerned, there will be massive repercussions. Yes. The only flights that will probably still be allowed would be freight flights. As far as uh, the shipping industry is concerned, freight will continue. But of course, wherever people Passenger. come together, uh, that will be curtailed. So the tourist industry and then they go into the various categories and then they also talk interestingly about traffic. In other words, the number Movement. of cars on the road. Initially that will increase dramatically because people won't be able to take part in public transport because that's when people come together. Yes. And because that will put an extra load on the roads, there will have to be restrictions in terms of that as well. And uh, there will be massive logistical problems in bringing food into the area because some borders will now be activated that might not have been activated before.
there will be of course massive impacts on on the medical sphere and on pharmaceuticals. Also very interesting is nutrition. Now the production of, of food will continue but it will be majorly impacted because the people will be sick, the farmers will be sick, some of them will be dying, so there will be a massive reduction including the massive reduction of food coming into the area. So it seems as though a simplified lifestyle is on the cards. Yes. And life as usual with luxury and all of those things will be a thing of the past. It reminds me of the regulations in the Second World War yes. or even in the First yeah. when there were such major restrictions on food. And for example, certain luxury items like uh, flour, white flour, was not allowed, it was, permit, was forbidden by law. Yeah. Only the military was allowed to get some of these things. And uh, you know what's fascinating? In uh, Sweden, for example, and in Norway, in the Nordic countries, uh, all the meat and all the pork production was confiscated because yes. it went to the military. In, in uh, World War. During the World War, yes. yes, when the Nazi regime was was trying to take over the world. All of those food items went to the military and the people had to revert to a very simple lifestyle. And uh, disease dropped dramatically. <laughs> yes. yes, heart disease, cancer, the graph just dropped precipitously and the people were healthy, but in the military, military. it just rose <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> so the airlines will no longer operate for uh, touristic travel or travel in general. Uh, your household will be affected. Life Bo will change. Yes, and it's already Boeing is um, asking for a trillion dollar bailout to get to just keep afloat. In fact, in the document, they say that governments will probably have to bail out and other statements on the Internet yeah. that governments will have to bail out these large industries or else they will not survive. And then, of course, the psychological uh, effects. You will have to keep away from large groups of people. So we are restricting them to below 100 and later maybe to below 50. So freedom of association will change. Now that is also a way besides preventing the spread of disease to control people yes. so that you don't have anarchy developing under these conditions. And if the, the hand of the law stretches right into your home, now what if it stretches all the way to your communication. Isn't there a law to be passed in Israel now that uh, your cell phone will be monitored? What is that yes. all about? It says the government okays a mass surveillance of Israelis' phones to curb coronavirus. So there's a lot of legislation that is being put in place and surveillance that has been perfected to a T in China. Yes. And that same technology is available in the, in the rest Most of the world. Most countries in the world already. Exactly. Uh, can be used in this situation as well. So you're not allowed to have uh, this association and you have to avoid public life, the things that happen in public life. Sport will be influenced, all of these. And of course, uh, your permission to be in certain places at certain times. So what is, the, what is the impact going to be? Well, small industry will suffer the most. Already the cafes are closing. Any privately owned little industry will not be able to probably survive this. And uh, I find this rather interesting. And I don't think we have to say any more about the document because it is a blueprint that is being followed to a T. Yes. And I think about a conversation I had with a young person about a year ago. 
And that person was vehemently against the idea that we are living close to the end of time. And uh, we have a little garden. It's not a very big garden, but it produces some tomatoes and some vegetables and a lettuce here and a lettuce there. Yeah. And they were questioning why we would do that, why we would bother. I mean, why not just go down the road and go to Costco? And I said to that young person, this is a year ago, I said to this young person, what if you go to Costco and the store is empty? What if there's nothing on the shelf? What are you going to do then? And they looked at me as if I have fallen off a bus and said, are you crazy? It's never been like that and it won't be like that in the future. And I said, well, you better pray that it stays that way. And just one year later, the shelves are empty. Now, I'm not being a, a fear monger, but if this is a reality, then I believe that we could be very close to the time that we have been waiting for, and it's not going to be a pleasant time. It's going to be a hard time. And as anarchy increases and as laws are enacted that uh, enforce the new status quo, then we will see major changes in the world. Now already the governments have announced that they have uh, re released the military to take care of some of these issues. Certain personnel will be empowered to enforce these laws. Already in France, if you are on the street after a certain time, you will be fined. Yes. And these laws will become more and more stringent. Hasn't Donald Trump released the National Guard? Yes. Thousand troops in six states in response to coronavirus. And national states of emergency have been declared in various countries already. Now the next move after a state of emergency is martial law. Yes. Now what if martial law is applied? Because the interesting thing about martial law is it overrides the law of the land. Yes. That means that if martial law is declared, then the constitutions are no longer valid. Zbog vanrednih okolnosti jedne potpuno šizofrene situacije u kojoj nas je uvela ova nesposobna vlast na čelu sa velizdenikom i političkim prevarantom Aleksandrom Vučićem, koja je preti da ozbiljno ugrozi sve ono što su generacije iza nas vekovima stvarale, iz tog razloga imam ljudsku, moralnu i profesionalnu obavezu kao osnivač i vlasnik jedne slobodne i nezavisne medijske kuće u Srbiji da vam se obratim ovim putem. Pokušat ću da centrala tema mog izlaganja bude jedno jezgrovito objašnjenje o značaju i doprinosu društvenih mreža i alternativnih medija u Srbiji, kao i o tome kakva je njihova uloga i odgovornost u ovom kritičnom, teškom i vanrednom stanju koje nas je sve zadesilo. Ali pre toga mora da se osredem kako na razloge, tako i na sve posledice ovog društvenog sunovrata i potpunog bezumlja koje su dovele do toga da smo mi danas postali lični i privatni logoraši jednog bolesnog i umno poremećenog čoveka koji je zarad svog rejtinga i obstanka na vlasti uhapsio i zarobio celu Srbiju. I zato se ovom prilikom obraćam direktno tebi, Aleksandre Vučiću, Tebi, koji si najodgovorniji za ovaj haos i ludilo u koje si nas uvukao, za društveni i privredni kolaps koji nam preti, tebi koji si bez proglašene epidemije preko noći pogazio ustav, suspendovo parlament, van zakonski proglasio vanredno stanje i tako izvršio državni udar i uveo tvoju ličnu vojnu diktaturu. Uvoditi ovako drastične mere preko noći, bez ikakve prethodne pripreme stanovništva za to, Na tako grub, okrutan i brutala način na koji si ti uradio izvesti naoružane ljude sa dugim cevima sa prstom na obaraču da patroliraju ulicama, obraćati se naci bez ikakve empatije, topline, solidarnosti i osjećaja odgovornosti, to sve ukazuje da si ti ovaj trenutak čekao čita svoj život. Ovo je bila tvoja šansa koju nisi mogo da propustiš.